right, 1997, AB5, BC5. Okay, this is our function. Um, it says the graph of the function f consists of a semicircle, so this is f, uh, of two line segments as shown above. Let g be the function given by this. So g uses this. And if you guys know the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, you know that the derivative of g is just going to be f of t. So this is actually f or g prime, too. So um, anyways, we'll get to that. This says find g of 3. All right, so that's uh, not really straining. Let's just plug in 3. So it's going to be g of 3 of 0 to 3 of f of t dt. Now, since f is not defined, we're just given, well, it's defined using the graph. We just have to find the area from 0 to 3. Okay, from 0 to 3. So we got to find this area. You find the area of this circle. You find the area of, whoops, half this triangle. So it's right here. You find the area of half that triangle, and then you get your answer. So um, I'm going to kind of do that on the side because I have very limited space on my screen right here. We have um, uh, the radius of that circle is 2, right? And it's pi r squared to find the area. So it's going to be 4 pi. And the area of just this section what, how much of that circle is right there? Quarter. A quarter. So we're going to divide this by 4, and that gives us pi. So pi plus the area of this little triangle right here. That, that triangle has a, a, a base of 1 and a height of negative 1. So that would be negative 1 times 1 half, because the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So we get negative 1 half. So we get minus... Actually, not plus now. It's minus. You can leave it plus. Yeah, I could leave it plus, but I like that. Okay, that's the answer uh, for that one. When, g, when uh, x equals 3 in the g function, this is what you get. Next one says, find all the values on the open interval negative 2, 5, at which g has a relative maximum. Okay, where does it have a relative maximum? This says justify your answer. Now, because we know, now we have some new information. Because remember, uh, this was like the FRQ I gave you guys earlier when you guys had to think of the area underneath the curve. But now we know, we know uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, which says this. If you have um, g right here, and you take the derivative of it, then you would take the derivative of that side, which just equals what? F of t, F of t which is great. So what does that mean? How would, you, how would you justify this? Well, you can write this to justify your answer. Or you can just say, well, g prime of x equals f of t. So because g prime equals f of t, you're looking at this line now in a new light. This is g prime of x. It is that. So if that's true, if we wanted to find a relative maximum, we just have to find out where, let's see, like for g, I don't know what g looks like, but let's say that this is g, g of x. We have to find out where the slope is increasing and then decreasing, because then that will give me a maximum, right? Or a relative max, or local max, however you want to say it. Um, so where is the slope positive and then negative? Well, you're looking for where this line is above the x-axis. If it's above the x-axis, that means the slope is positive. So it's, it's positive right here from negative 2 to 2, and then it goes below the x-axis. So it goes from positive to negative at 2. So where's your maximum? Two. It's at x equals 2. Okay, th did I answer my question? It says find all the values of x in the open interval. All the values. Okay, so I've got to check the other ones. Is there any other place on this line where it goes from oh, yeah. positive Four. to negative? Oh, right here it goes from positive to, or I'm sorry, negative Four. to positive, right? But negative to positive is a minimum. See, this is decreasing. And then it's increasing. That means that's a minimum. Okay. So, um, no, yeah, ne negative two. I I don't know. I mean, that's an endpoint, um, and this is not included in that. So negative two, you can't call uh, you can't call that a, a minimum. Only x equals two is where your minimum is at. All right. So let's look at the next one. It says write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of g at x equals 3. So now if we're thinking about this line as g prime, we can know what the slope is at x equals 3 for my g function. This isn't the g function. We just did that for a visual. So uh, what is the slope at x equals 3? So we look at the g prime and we look at 3. 
What's the y value there? Actually, you know what? I, I shouldn't point this down at the line. I should point this at the y-axis. G, G prime is the y-axis, and so this negative 1 right there, that's at 3. So we put negative 1 down for our slope. And uh, if I was writing the equation of a line, what's the other thing I need? Point. I need a point. So I need a point. Um, what is that point going to be? It's going to be at 3. So what's the y value? What's the y value at 3? Didn't we already do that? Right there, right? The, the y value for g. So we plug in 3 to this. What do we get? Oh, that's a nasty y. Pi minus 1 half. So now we have our points and our slope. We can plug stuff in. We have y minus. That would be uh, pi minus 1 half, because that's our y value, equals negative 1 times x minus 3. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. Uh, you probably don't, I mean, you don't really have to, but I hate leaving things ugly. So uh, I'm going to distribute that negative right here. So that's going to be a, a negative pi and a positive one half. So we have y plus pi, um, no, negative pi, sorry. Negative pi, positive one half equals, that's going to be negative x plus 3. And so then I have to move these guys over to the other side. So let me write that up here where I have space. It's going to be y equals negative x. And then I can, I'll get plus 2, 1 half, and then plus pi. Oh, that's nasty. Okay, but that's, that is the equation. I mean, you probably can just leave it. I'm happy with my test. Isn't if you just leave this half? as point, point slope form, unless it specifies it. No, because you would go 3 minus 1 half, so you get 2 and a half. And then you would add pi to the other side, that's why it's plus pi. If you have a great understanding of prime functions, this one is not that bad. D says, find the x-coordinate of each point of inflection of the graph of G on the open interval, negative 2 to 5. Justify your answer. Okay, now... We're going to use this graph right here, because this is g prime. Now, the inflection points for g is going to be given to us um, by g, g uh, double prime, right? g double prime will give us inflection points wherever the max and min are for, for the, the g prime function. So it's wherever the this is switching directions. So here, let me let me explain the slope of g in terms of this right here. Right here, the slope is positive, right? And this whole area, the slope is positive. What's happening right here as I move my arrow up? What's happening to the slope as I move it up? It is increasing. It goes from zero to two. The slope is increasing. So if the slope is increasing. What's the concavity of G between negative 2 and 0? It's concave up. It's concave up right here. And then right here it stops and it starts going down. Now the, po the slope is still positive, but the slope is now decreasing, right? It's going from 2 down to 0. So what's the concavity right here for this? It is concave down. So it goes from concave up to concave down. Wherever concavity switches... That's where a point of inflection is. And so I'm going to write it down, then we'll explain it in a little bit. So for letter D, Alex, let's do a different color. For letter D, x equals 0 gives me an inflection point. So we keep going. The concavity is, de or the slope is decreasing, decreasing, and still decreasing right here. And then it changes right here, and it starts increasing. So the concavity, the the slope is decreasing and then changes to start increasing. If the slope is decreasing, then it's concave down, and then the slope starts increasing right at x equals 3. So where's our other inflection point for g? x equals 3. So how would you explain this stuff? I would explain it like this. I would say f prime, no, not f prime, sorry, g prime of x is increasing from negative 2 to 0. Then 
decreasing from oh, I'm running out of space from 0 to whatever 3 okay so because of that change because it was increasing and decreasing we have an inflection point at 0 okay and then I would say the same thing for 3 I would say g prime so that's one of them g prime is decreasing You could probably simplify what I'm saying. I just maybe I'm being too thorough here. G G prime is decreasing from zero to three, then increasing from three to five, and that that would be our justification right there. <laughs>